Hello, so today we are joined by Jack Rowe and we're going to explore process versus outcome. Yeah, so basically how this topic came up was we both op- we both entered autumn marathon in some way. So I'm yeah. doing Berlin. I'm doing, doing Frankfurt. Frankfurt. Yeah. And they're both kind of quite big deals for us for slightly different reasons. For me, Berlin is a shot at getting the Olympic qualifying time, which seems like a hugely scary big goal. <laughs> And why is Frankfurt important for you? We kind of talked about it last episode. Actually, yeah, but... so for me, it's like I've ha- done a few marathons now and I've really enjoyed the process of it, the build up, loved it. And it's gone really well. Training's gone well for me. But then the race itself, there's always been something that's not gone quite right. And then I think the more marathons I've done, it starts like messing with your head a bit, like what's going to go wrong this time? And there's definitely like then something in my mind that was like holding me back and thinking, I don't feel 100% perfect. So then it's just like gone out the window and been a bit of a flop. So yeah, yeah, this marathon's definitely focusing on like how to get both physically ready, but also more importantly, mentally ready for this. Yeah, I know I could do the training, but I need to like get my mind ready for the actual race itself. Yeah, and I think like for both of us, that's kind of put the pressure on, which is what we were discussing the other day. But as we're having that discussion, we're like, hang on, we've still got to be enjoying that process. Yeah. You know, the build up is such a big part of it. It's, you know, my build up's been like 12 weeks. I mean, that's a huge chunk of time in comparison to like a two hours something marathon. Yeah. And ultimately, like, why do we do it? We do it for fun. We do it to enjoy it. Obviously, it is my career as well, and it's hugely important to you, I know, but ultimately comes back to that fun element. And I think being able to like enjoy that and enjoy the race is so important. You work so yeah. hard for it. like Exactly. You want to have fun it. on the day as well and kind of celebrate all the training you've done. So yeah, yeah, it yeah. Is, it's, it should be an achievement. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, excited to dig into it. And it will be really good to get Jack's thoughts coming from a slightly different angle of kind of shorter distance. More racing. Yeah, a lot more racing. So yeah, yeah, good topic. Thank you for joining us for Five Miles Easy where we go behind the scenes on our wins, uphill battles and learnings as we chase our running goals. We will be joined by guests to delve into everything from training and nutrition to mindset and beyond, bringing you conversations that motivate, inspire and get you one step closer to your goals. So let's race up for five miles easy. Jack is a pro runner for Puma and has some incredible PBs across a whole range of everything from like well, 1,500 up to half marathon, really. Um, but just to name a few, 1,320 in the 5K on the track. I really hope I get these right. <laughs> um, 28 minutes for the 10K and 62 minutes for the half. So just insanely speedy across, yeah, such a broad range of distances. And a running coach for Belgrave Run Club, which we all chat about in a bit too. This episode is sponsored by Puma Running. As a pro marathon runner, having the best running shoes I can get is pretty crucial. I'm a Puma athlete, and one of the reasons I actually signed with Puma in the first place was the huge amount of research and development that Puma put into creating their running shoes. They spent years developing the carbon race shoes, the Deviate Elites and the Fast Stars, which I do all my races in. Along with the huge range of awesome shoes, Puma have some pretty cool running kit too. I think my favorite thing at the moment is the running tops that have a foam pocket in the back, which is just super handy. Anyway, if you're looking for a new pair of running shoes or some new kit, we have a very special discount code for our 5 Miles Easy podcast listeners. So if you want to go to uk.puma.com and enter the code 5ME25, so that's 5ME25 at the checkout. You can get 25% off any shoes or clothing across the site. So Jack, welcome to the podcast. Thanks very much for joining us for 5 Miles Easy. And how are you doing? Very well, thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, be great to sit down and chat. Um, and yeah, talk about all things 5 Miles and Easy. That's perfect. <laughs> We're really excited to get your views on our topic this week, which is process versus outcome. Um, But before we delve into that, the question we like to ask all our guests is, what is your why when it comes to running? Good question. Um, For me, 
it would be I can be in the worst, worst mood, horrible person, something's gone wrong, I'm, you know, this, I'm that. And if I can make myself go out the door for 40 minutes, I come back and I'm like, zen. I'm like, it completely yeah. allows me to like kind of switch any situation, anything. So yeah, for me, I think as a kid as well, when like, I don't know, stuff was going on and you're like, when I got into my running for those like 40 minutes, I could come back and I came back like an angel. And it was quite nice. That I could just like completely switch my emotions. So yeah, um, yeah running just like cures anything. It cures a hangover, it cures, <laughs> it cures yeah. a bad run, it, cures, it yeah, it kind of clears clears my mind and be able to be like move forward with things. Yeah, I definitely relate to that. And also, do you find there's times that you're really not in the mood to run, but you know that as soon as you get going, like it's just gonna make you feel better. So you can kind of overcome that before. Yeah, exactly. Like I had a bit of a mediocre race on Sunday, flew back Monday morning and was kind of like sitting around doing and ahhing like I know I need to go and run my 50 minutes this evening and like was almost dreading it five minutes into the run I was like oh this is great Do you know what I mean I got my music back in I'm running around Richmond Park oh, life's yeah. life's back to normal and good again do you know what I mean it's just yeah. a slightly yeah yeah a run to cure a run I mm -hmm. love that yeah. yeah 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 I can yeah totally relate to that as well it's just I think especially somewhere like Richmond Park when you mm -hmm. just run around you're like oh this is so beautiful I know that yeah. sounds kind of it's middle of London, kind of central London, but mm -hmm. still it's just like one of those places yep. that I go to when I'm stressed or like having a bad day and I just know I'm gonna finish it. Minus the uphill, I hate the uphill. Mm -hmm. But there's something about that that like get, gets yeah. it all out of me. Yeah, it's, like, it's <laughs> a privilege to run. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, Love exactly. Um, right, so to delve into today's topic of mm -hmm. process versus outcome, um, obviously for us, coming from pretty much, well, actually, Steph, you've done a lot more on the track and different distances, but mm -hmm. I've kind of pretty much solid marathon. Um, you've got an amazing depth though, over like cross country you've done, I know you've, you've run since school at mm -hmm. a high level. So you've done like cross country, everything up from like 800s and shorter distances, yep. 1500. Now you do a lot of kind of 5k on the road and track, mm -hmm. 10k half marathon. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of racing, isn't it? Yeah. Which especially for us with, you know, with marathons, you kind of do two a year and you might fit like a half and a 10K in somewhere, but you're looking at your power of 10. It's like just <laughs> pages Everything. and yeah. pages Everything. of racing. Yeah. Now, race is obviously like inevitably you're very much focused on the outcome. Mm -hmm. But how do you... Like, first of all, do you do you enjoy that? Do you enjoy kind of that emphasis on the times and the the outcome mm -hmm. and, you know, getting like those seconds off, especially in those shorter distances? I do. I do. And obviously, as you said, we've got to the elite end of this sport and you're constantly changing faster and faster qualifying times, you know, like when the yeah. new world set comes out and the Olympic set comes out and you're like, I need another eight seconds here or I need another eight seconds after that. So I do, but it is also quite um, mentally draining at times. And I think that's maybe why I do such a breadth of distances because it's not just mm. like one of my lap splits for 5K, you know. I can yeah. drop down to 1500 and, and, and enjoy a more kind of tactical type of race. And then in four weeks time, I'm going to step up to the big half and have a completely different style of racing. Does that different. take the pressure off a bit as well? I think it does. Yeah, I think it yeah. does. That You almost spread your bets and maybe that's a, a bad way of putting it becoming like a jack of all trades of maybe i should just a like jack row of all yeah trades. A jack row of all <laughs> trades. instead of having like 12 months like specifically and i'm definitely going that way more with the 5k recently kind of the past past two years and next year it's been a little bit more like okay how do i make myself handle 63 per lap for 12 and a half laps and so things have become slightly more specific but I think in the past, that's why I've quite liked going and doing the big half at the end of the year is a bit of, mm. it was fun the first year I did it. And then yeah. when I kind of proved to myself that I could compete, that's when I was like, oh, like maybe I should do this like a little bit more seriously. And then, you know, thoughts about the marathon later on down the line. Yeah, yeah. exciting. And you say jack of all trades, but like you're bloody good at all of them, aren't you? Mm. Where did you come in big half last year? It was like second. 
Yeah. yeah. So sec it's second like, twice in so a row. It'd be quite nice to, to win one, hopefully, this, this yeah. September. Well, kind of keeps your options open. It does. Yeah. It does. Um, so I definitely think I'll, I've always felt very natural on the roads, like even, yeah. as, a, even as a kid like 16, 17, I did my first half marathon just because it was on the roads around where I lived. And oh, so I cool. knew like every inch of the course, like I, tr you know, trained and had run those roads, you know, yeah. For, yeah. for years. And so I jumped in it, actually missed the start. It's actually quite a funny story of like, I just completely like switched off. I would like, cause it, <laughs> cause it wasn't like a race race, you know, and my dad yeah. was doing it as well. He was, he was running for himself and he was like an hour before he's like, Jack, you've done this a hundred times. I'm just going to let you do your own thing. Anyway, I just completely switched off and was like on my phone and someone was like, mate, the race is starting in like three minutes. And I'm like, not dressed, no shoes, like, oh my God. Not, not at the start line. And anyway, I have nightmares about yeah. things like that. Yeah. And anyway, like I ran it, came second, ran like 69 minutes, which back then, you know, in, yeah, in old, old, how old were you? I, th I think I was like 16, 17, yeah, 18, that's amazing. something like that. You know, it was like five twenties average in old shoes on like not an up and down course but there was some good hills in yeah there. um so i think i've always liked yeah having that kind of breadth and feeling natural on yeah. the road so it mm. will come in the future and that is also in the back of my mind like mm. oh, like you know what could i run for a marathon in six months time if i gave it a go yeah 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 so much time really to discover that. Mm. so yeah but then uh, it's also the indecision of like you know that almost wipes out chances of qualifying at other distances so um yeah, yeah. it's all a bit of a mm. mo moving puzzle so definitely takes a bit out fun. of you needs a mm -hmm. lot of planning yeah but i guess like so at the moment where you do have so many races in the year over a range of distances mm -hmm. how do you plan that for the year and kind of how do you get the balance right between your training and the number of races that you do it's really hard it's really hard and i, I literally had a conversation with my coach two days ago about um I have this mindset of I'm a strength guy. I want to go and run 115, 120 miles a week at altitude. Mm. And the day I drop down is when I'm ready to go at 5K. Like that's my day. Do you know what I mean? Like I haven't got all the speed in my legs. I haven't run 1500s. I haven't done sharpening stuff. Like I just want to know on my Google Doc training log that the average for the past eight weeks is 110. Wow. So when you say strength, you mean yeah. like just basically running like huge miles huge mileage lots of threshold long runs you know and just i like to see that block yeah whereas he's like yeah but we've done all this sharpening stuff and you freshened up and we've got all this racing in your legs um you know he believes that i should be in a better place to run a 5k like now compared to like three months ago when i got down from flag um and so that's why i got that test yesterday to kind of like yeah. compare the engines like it's very like rare you actually get to look at like what are your numbers yeah um so it is super hard about how you like juggle you know keeping that volume high all the way through the year and technically getting better but also dropping off freshening up and actually getting the full performance out of yourself not mm -hmm. just leaving three or four percent there because you're running on tired legs and so it's a horrible conundrum that i'm always trying to uh to battle and think of new ways of getting through it so yeah and it must be hard when you've got like you know races so regularly yeah to actually get the consistent training and especially mm -hmm. if you know as you were saying you feel like you're fittest when you're running those huge miles yeah but then like fitting a block in in between yeah. so many races yeah exactly i think hard. that's almost why weirdly i enjoyed covid because there was just no races, you know, oh, for like, yeah. for like, okay, interesting. for like nine months. It was like a very, me and my coach sat down. I, I had just come back from the NCA. Um, COVID kind of ended my final year out there. And me and my coach went, well, we're just going to put down the biggest block you've mm. ever put down. Yeah. Hopefully touch wood and don't get injured. Mm. And, and we'll, and we'll, we'll be ready when the races do come. And it's like very weird to think there's very, very few times you know ever that will ever run 12 14 months again without a race and just have yeah. the ability to just go and train and we did we did like six weeks hard one week easy six weeks hard one week easy did you really six enjoy weeks. that i did i did because i because in the back of my head i could see i could see the graph just going up and yeah it was like those six weeks were good took an easy one those six weeks were better took an easy one those six weeks were better and it yeah. was like i just i was pure confidence at that point whereas now it's like you're juggling races for Puma, you're juggling mm. races for your contract, you're juggling races to try and make teams, you're juggling races 
in the US, you know, because they're sh you know, far short tracks, you yeah. know, those 395 meter tra <laughs> tracks that you have to go and visit. Um, and you're kind of getting pulled in like 10 different directions on what's, and there's no like playbook. There's no like, yeah, this is the way you have to do it. So you're it's always, so individual. You're always learning on the job. So, um, which is good fun. Yeah. Just. <laughs> yeah. Do you, did you miss the, I guess the like emotional side of racing? Cause it is, you know, it's so exciting, mm -hmm. but I think, I think for me as well, I really noticed like having gone from, um, you know, a job where I was working in the city and it's very kind of emotional. Well, you do, you do get kind of adrenaline from doing deals and everything, but mm -hmm. in running and racing now, I find it's like such an extreme of high and lows. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll have races that go well and it's like your top of the world. Yeah. And then, or even, you know, even just in training, you have like times that are going well and you're like, I love this. Mm -hmm. And then times when it's not going well and races yeah. don't go well and it's like such low and because it's so personal mm -hmm. that is such an emotional roller coaster so do you like that side of it and kind of having that so regularly with the amount of races you do yeah it's 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 tough and i actually had a good conversation about this with craig winrow one of the coaches based mm. at st mary's yeah. and he said the funny thing about bad runs are yeah they suck you know you race on a saturday Saturday evening's pretty miserable. Sunday morning's a little bit like, mm, yeah, yesterday weren't great. By Monday, nobody in the world cares. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, <laughs> and actually, yeah. like, breaking out of that cycle yeah. is actually quite nice and quite, like, you know, two weeks on from a bad run, we're not all talking about, God, did you see Rose two weeks ago? Like, gee, oh, yeah. she, looked, like, she didn't look good. Do you know what I mean? Monday, yeah. everyone's like, all right, everyone had a dust up on Saturday night. Some people yeah. rolled that way. Some people went this way everyone's back to work and yeah. I, I, you have to remind yourself that at times that like yeah. no one actually cares no one yeah. actually cares so, i mean even on the day like yeah. i mean i can't think of any time when i've been like oh god they did really badly yeah you know someone yeah. might have a bad race you're like oh they must okay. be disappointed that's sad for them yeah. something but you're never like oh they're a shit runner <laughs> yeah yeah exactly whereas in your head you go yeah. home and you're like god what have i done and and I was like, so i can never go out to the house <laughs> yeah. again i'm so embarrassed yeah. Yeah. i had a funny conversation with my psychologist a few days ago and mm -hmm. we were talking about that of like who really cares he was like ultimately you're a piece of dust yeah <laughs> like, yeah. yeah a little tiny speck in like a moment in history like no it means nothing yeah like <laughs> it just puts everything into perspective because you're just like yeah, like, why do I care? Yeah, why? Yeah. No, no one else is beating me <laughs> up over it. So, yeah. like, why should I? Like, I know we always want to be better and we've always got that goal in mind of what the time is or the result is or the performance is. Um, but, yeah, the, if you can actually let some of that negative stuff go, yeah, your life becomes a hell of a lot easier. Yeah. So. And more enjoyable, especially if you've got to, you know, inevitably, if you do that many races. Yeah, you're gonna have bad ones. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And it almost makes you, when you have a great day, you don't actually ever go like, oh, that was actually really good. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. Everything came together. I had, you know, you completely forget about the six bad ones you've just had. And you just like, yeah. you just yeah. naturally step into like, yeah, well, of course, this is the athlete like I expect to be. Like, this is the athlete I see myself being. And yeah. you almost don't even appreciate what you've just done. You go and have a great race and you're like, Okay, so I ran 13.20 back in the sound 5K meet early this year. Six second PB, wanted a little bit more, but was still pretty happy with it. Your instant baseline for like success or failure is then 13.20. Yeah. If you run 13.22, two days later, horrible race. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like what, yeah. went, what, what went wrong? Yeah. Whereas two days ago, that was, you'd have bitten your hand off for four seconds quicker. And so it's like, so true. you completely forget that like, you, there's been a huge journey and a huge process and yeah. you have to really celebrate the good days because they are outnumbered by bad days so yeah. true yeah and i think there's actually my coach said something interesting the other day he was like um i was saying you know berlin like we're talking about targets and stuff mm -hmm. and um i was like well you know at least i've like i've got to pb but i, I want to go a bit quicker than that and he was like yeah but think about you know you're i'm always wanting to pb and i go into every single race being like yeah. well if i don't you know pb is like the baseline bare minimum yeah and if it is if i don't pb then it's crap but you know hopefully i get like a huge pb yeah and he's like you're literally going in asking to run faster than you've ever run before 
every single time. When you might have had like the best conditions when you got the PB or, yeah. and you know, especially, well, I think with any different distance, you know, so much can happen mm -hmm. and you might have crap weather. You might just like have an off day, but Pacing you go in expecting yeah. to like run faster than you've ever run before. Mm -hmm. But there's not even that like um, process of recognizing yeah. how hard that is. Yeah. And how well you might have done before. Exactly. Yeah. And the other crazy thing is we have all these like static, like uh, you must have set, you've set a target time for your autumn marathon. Yeah. And I bet you know exactly what that is per mile and what, oh, that, yeah. and what that is per kilometer. Yeah. And she'll have already thought if I can't do this in training between now and then, yeah. well, that's the target time in training. Do you know what I mean? So yes. It's like, so you've set preconceived times <laughs> within your training and within your race date that you know you can't do now. Yeah. Mm. Otherwise, you'd have already run slightly quicker, you know, for yourself for the, yeah. for the marathon or me for the 5K. I'm like, I need to be able to go and run 30.07. So I'm going to set all my training around running 63 seconds per lap. And it's like, yeah, but why don't you just concentrate on actually being the best possible athlete that you can be in mm. the full? And you'll give yourself a pretty decent chance of actually hitting that goal. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you go into every session and every race, with like this preconceived like i have to be able to run 63s and it's like well you might not be able to run 63s in in um in in the autumn so yeah. like actually doing all this training to run 63s in, for the next two or three months is almost like a bit of a waste of time because you can't you're not going to get there anyway do you know what I mean? and we yeah. like set these like points through like we have to be here there and here there and here there and it's like yeah i had such a good chat with luke gunn and he was like people like set times and i i'm i'm so guilty of it i'm so guilty of it like we set target times and then we build training plans off target times and it's like if you actually just forgot about that went and got the best possible place you could be in the best training the best long runs the best recovery you'll probably run your best yeah mm, you you're actually I mean? just really focus on, on the process on the process yeah. rather than like what the end goal could be or yeah couldn't be. and obviously yeah. two weeks out you need to do like a taster you know like a yeah you've got to know like, like roughly where you're a time at, trial, like you know where roughly is it i mean yeah. maybe you're above where you wanted to be but if you're not there, then maybe going and racing at that target time two weeks out, you could get a better result going yeah. at it through a different yeah. way. I mean, I'm interested, how do you deal with it mid-race if <laughs> you've got that target time in your yeah. head, but you know you're slightly off, especially in like a 5K where every second yeah. per lap counts. Yeah. You know you're off, you're not going to get it. Like, how do you deal with that to still get your best outcome on the day? It's really hard. Yeah, it's really hard. Like I went through, I had a 5k in Luxembourg on Sunday and it was a absolute up and down of emotions. Like first 2k, I didn't look at the clock because I was like, oh, this feels really hard. Like this feels really hard. Like I'm working, I'm breathing. I can already feel my legs. Like it's not plain sailing at all. And I looked at the clock and it said 518. So that's under 1320. And I was like, all right, okay, mm -hmm. all right, you know, this isn't meant to be easy. Like, I'm not feeling great, but if I'm not feeling great running that, brilliant. I then got to 3K and I was like, oh, actually, I don't, I don't feel too bad now. Like, actually, this, you know, the pace seems to, you know, slowed or feels easier to me a little bit. And it was 8.02, 8.03. And I was thinking, oh, that's perfect. Like, that is on the money. But you've slowed by like five or six seconds through the K there. I'm like, of course it feels better. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And, so, and, then I, and then I'm thinking, oh, no, this is brilliant. Like, your head just goes like oh, we've evened 803 mm -hmm. and it's like no you haven't and then the fourth k you look and you're like i've lost seven seconds there <laughs> I'm, I'm not really sure what's happened you know what i mean and so it is yeah. super hard to you almost need like a b goal or a c goal yeah of like mm. okay a goal is we run this time the b goal is i need to make sure i come top five today yeah and even if we run 30 seconds slower yeah if i can make sure that i can come top five today i'll still get like a like a positive performance out of that yeah um, yeah, but it is really hard it when is. you look down and like, especially uh, a pressure that I never saw coming when doing this sport for fun and because I loved it for 15 years was having a contract and having those time bonuses in there mm -hmm. and going through 3K and thinking, all right, so I can't do that one anymore. That one, maybe. And then you're like, oh, I really should should hit that one today. And then you have a bad K and you're like, oh, crap, well, they're all gone. Do you know what I mean? And it's almost yeah. like, it's not then a bonus anymore. It's almost like you've lost money because you think you should be that good. Yeah, yeah, um, interesting. So you go into it kind of 
having that in the bank already yeah. and then you're like yeah yeah you're like oh my, you know my salary is this and like i expect i know i'm that good like yeah. i know i am that good mm. but until you've done because it because it's on paper yeah. <laughs> like yeah. you could but do until it, you've yeah. done it in black and yeah. white you haven't done it and so then all of a sudden it's like crap like i left you know i lost that money and it's like no it's in the bonus column do you know what i mean and so it is very hard within race it took me a while to get used to that yeah um, and also not to chase races like i went and did valencia half marathon like there was no way in any world i should have gone and done that race like i had five weeks i took two weeks off on holiday mm. but it was to go and chase a half marathon time because i thought i was that good okay so yeah yeah not easy that's probably the biggest one it's going around thinking like and like not looking at the clock and like not doing the maths of like you know what you need to do and what what you need to do to bring home some extra money because unfortunately that is part of the reason i do it now because yeah it, 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 yeah it's, it's a job yeah yeah, you know, yeah it, it does a add job. a different dimension doesn't it it does a different pressure yeah like, you know if i want to save for a house deposit i have to run really well <laughs> you know <laughs> or if yeah I, you know, another pressure want, for sure. i want to go on a, a really nice holiday like i need to run really well yeah, yeah. it's literally your job <laughs> yeah it yeah. is yeah. yeah but a cool job to have no and, complaints <laughs> yeah. no complaints yeah and i suppose the flip side of that is like you could be trying to juggle like an office job and yeah. not being paid to run and still having to like make Do all and that meet anyway. and yeah. No, I'm making yeah. it very clear that I'm never complaining. I'm in <laughs> very, very, very lucky spot. Um, and that was, yeah, I had the biggest, like I was driving in Flagstaff this uh, May. I was out there for seven weeks, did a few races. And again, I had a slightly, not quite what I wanted. And I was like borrowing someone's like Toyota, like Yaris, I'm like, 15, 20 year old car, mm. windows down, like country music, nice. like blasting out of like the little stereo. And I was like, I'd just gone and done my double in like the most picturesque spot. Ugh. And I was like, never complain ever again, Jack. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. This is yeah, a cool life. Like, this, this is a, this is a, this is, yeah, you're really lucky. And yeah, if you're ever going to sit there and complain about running two or three seconds slow here, don't so yeah i can so relate to that i like yeah. i constantly remind myself I, I mean i don't really have to remind myself because i still yeah. feel like i have so many like real pinch me moments mm -hmm. when you know i spent like years kind of running to and from the office and literally yeah. it was like my pure hobby yeah and then when i get those days when i'm like knackered and i've got to go out and it's raining yeah and i'm like hang on you're being paid to do this like yeah. it's so cool yeah exactly um, just yeah i could be you know in an office or something yeah trust me yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah sorry Steph, i'm really <laughs> rubbing it in here One day. <laughs> yeah. um i was gonna ask so you were mentioning a lot about times and mm -hmm. the standards now yeah to compete for gb just getting quite crazy <laughs> um yeah. yeah what is the five it's like 1307? Oh, yeah. 1307. Yeah. Yeah. Insane. Do you find that is motivating to try and achieve it? Mm -hmm. Or is it a bit demoralizing sometimes when the, the times keep getting faster and faster and you're having to catch up with that? It's a little bit of both. Like yeah. it will make hopefully qualifying for those championships even more satisfying because mm -hmm. you'll be mm -hmm. going as, you know, for the, for the Paris 5000, it's 1305. You know, so you're going to have to run 1304 point something which will make you third or fourth fastest brit all time yeah um so that would be hugely satisfying you know and you've got you know you're including mo farah in that you're including uh dave moorcroft you know so two of the british greats of all time mm -hmm. um and so it will make it so satisfying to know that you've reached that level um but also it is a you know we're in a I'm in a genre of the athletics, you know, the middle distance and the long distance stuff where there are, you know, a bunch of athletes that are so much faster than that. You know, you know, you look at diamond leagues at the moment and the last yeah. three diamond leagues have been one in 1240. And it's like, <laughs> and it's like, you know, we're striving to run 1305 and that puts you top five Brit all time. Yeah. And, and we're 25 seconds behind the race wins in these, in these top tier races. So that side's a little bit, I wouldn't say demoralizing, but it's kind of a, almost a, a kick up kick up the arse a little bit to be mm -hmm. like you know you, we need to like shift our priorities of like you know what are these guys doing you know mm -hmm. maybe a little bit too much at times those guys but but yeah you know, they're still running 12 40 somehow somehow so yeah. a little bit a little bit both ways it's a little bit of a shame 
Um, and, you know, I don't want to dive into it, but, you know, I, I think the world rankings are a great way to qualify for yeah. a world or Olympics. Mm. I think that if you've been invited by the world governing body, then you are good enough to go and compete. And it's a shame that our governing body doesn't see it that way. But mm. I think it will force a lot of people to be better. And I think if they do make it in the future, then I think that will make it even more worthwhile. Yeah. Is there an element of, obviously those those times are insane, but is there an element of kind of, it shows you what's possible. You know, there mm -hmm. are there are people running like yeah. so much quicker now. Yeah. And I guess, that, I guess there are two sides of it because it's the same in the marathon, like the times are coming down so much and part mm -hmm. of it, part of me is like it, it in a way devalues your own time and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm I'm behind, yeah. I'm so, you know, I've got chunks to take off. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's so inspiring because it's like, it is possible. And, yeah. you know, there were quite a few people- Doing it. Doing it's it yeah. and, you know, they have, they have, Been the you, know, you know, the training can't be that different to what we're doing. No. So- Yeah. No, it's, exactly. It's definitely within the realms of like getting there. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, if they can do it, why can't anyone else do exactly, it? Exactly, so. yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know, if the if the qualifying time right now was, you know, well for Rio five thousand, the qualifying time was thirteen twenty three twenty four. Okay. Yeah. You know, so I'd have I'd have qualified. Yeah. Yeah. Know, obviously, new shoes, different eras, whatever. Yeah. So, um, but you know, a Still race reassuring. a race <laughs> recently went in Houston, um, where you know there was seven or eight Europeans under under thirteen oh five. And it's like, you know, so do you do you want to go to a British champ, a, a world champs where, mm. you know, the majority of the Europeans are running 1303, 1304? Mm -hmm. um, no, no, not really. Do you know, you want to go and compete. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying that, you know, you can't go and compete with a 1320. But like, if, if that's where um, the sport has moved to, then, yeah. then you want to get in there and get involved. And it is, you know, there's some guys in there that, you know, Brian Fay ran 1301, like Irish, Irish 5,000 meter record. Like that's, you know. I don't see myself being like, you know, incomparably different to him yeah. as an athlete. So like, if he can go and do it, then yeah, like we need to go and get a little bit closer to him. But yeah, it's like, God, he put 19 seconds into me. It's like, I'm not even on the same home straight. You know, I'm still on the bend somewhere. <laughs> you, you <laughs> well, that's nuts when you think about it like it that, is isn't nuts, it? It is nuts, but it is, no, it is. Yeah, because like, I think to most people, like obviously 13 anything 5K is just insane. Mm. I mean, even as like, to me, that's insane. And then to a lot of people who, you know, running like park run in mm -hmm. 25, 30 minutes, it's just mind blowing. And there's not that much difference between like 13.03 and 13.20. But there when is. you put it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there is, it I is. can tell you. Yeah. yeah. Big it must feel so different, yeah. So, but no, bit of, bit of both. Yeah. Bit of both. Yeah, oh, well, I'm sure you'll get there and yeah. it's not too far off, so. No, exactly. Um, so you're also a coach at Belgrave Run Club mm -hmm. and just wanted to kind of chat a bit more about that because that must bring quite a kind of different, I guess, dynamic to your whole running career and yeah. I guess a bit of balance as well to, to mm -hmm. all the competitive elements and, and yeah. running so far. So can you tell us a bit about that and kind of how you got into it? Yeah, of course. So um, we knew Steve Gardner, who's a great member down at um, Belgrave Harriers. Um, We'd always been friendly with him and, and got on well. Uh, and he said as a club, they were having to kind of not accept many new members just because their coaching roster was full, um, especially on the track. Um, the, the, there's ratios of coach to athletes that um, you can't exceed kind of health and safety wise. Yeah, Belgrade's um, quite a serious club, isn't it? Yeah, very serious. <laughs> and um, I actually tried to join when I first moved to London and I oh, was really? rejected. <laughs> so oh, <really? laughs> that now. not that I'm better. Yeah. <laughs> no, they are. They're really, really cool club, but they have yeah high entry standards. Um, and so yeah, they reached out to us and said, "Would you be up for organizing another coaching kind of group, um, more of a not a social group, but a you know like a run club and mm. but, but add that social aspect to it because mm -hmm. yeah, that's running is a social sport at the end of the day. Yeah. Like it's yeah. so much easier and so much more fun. Um, and yeah, so it's been going for about two years now. Um, yeah, we meet. Yeah, we meet every Tuesday, Thursday. It's the same kind of times as the main club body, um, but we go out on the roads, um, set sessions. We offer training plans for kind of. Uh, we have a marathon one at the moment, which we shoot out to people, and they can dive in and out of it, um, which is cool. Um, and yeah, we get them to race 
Um, so we have, you know, we have guys doing big half, guys doing vitality. Uh, people go and do kind of international marathons around, um, which is really cool. Yeah. But yeah, it mm. also does provide that, you know, I went to Luxembourg on Sunday and ran 12 seconds off my best. You know, I was like, oh, I came back and I was like, oh, I had a shocker. And they were like, well, how much slower is that? And they were like, 12 seconds. I'm like, what's wrong with that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Does it them. help give you like perspective on your own training and racing when you're yeah. surrounded by people that, you know, don't have it as their full time career? And yeah. They're like, yeah. Well, like, what are you worrying about? Do you know what I mean? He's yeah. like, you know, if he, <laughs> he runs 23.30 or 23.42. Like, he's like, okay, yeah. It wasn't my day today. Do you know what I mean? You know, yeah. Whereas, like, I'm like, what has that. gone wrong? Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. I need a new coach. I need to move country. Do you know what I mean? So it is yeah. really cool to, and that they're, they're good people. That's, that's, and I think, I think most people are good people, but runners are normally quite good people. And I love that Definitely. chat you can have with a complete randomer. And it's like, oh, what mm. races have you done? Or like, oh, what shoes have you tried? Or like, oh, you've got a nice yeah. loop around Richmond Park. I was like, oh, you take, you know. And so it's brilliant, the conversations you can have with someone with running just being the kind of core piece in the middle. Yeah, just immediately having something in common. Yeah, it's really yeah, cool. Yeah, that's cool. The shared experiences of it all. Yeah. yeah, and it must be like, I think, from well coaching people and then kind of seeing them progress and do get pbs and races mm -hmm. and everything that must be so kind of rewarding and bring like a lot of joy yeah. into into your running and your career no definitely like me and dan so i, I coach with daniel jarvis mm. um so he covers a lot of the coaching when i'm away on camp which is brilliant um but no like we really enjoy it you know when we look out yeah. for results you know when people are running london or when, when people are running these races and we're on we're on the live tracker and we have like all our athletes like starred and seeing how they're doing um no it's brilliant you know when people break you know three for the first time or three and a half for the first time it's yeah to them it's, it's just as big a win for them as, yeah. as when i go and run a two second pb on the 5k do you know what I mean like yeah. that's still yeah. the so that's cool. still the fastest they've ever run yeah it course. all came together on the day um yeah. You know, and, and obviously the PBs for them are much bigger. It's like, oh, I took 36 minutes off my, like, you know, half mar my, yeah, ma my marathon insane. time. Do you know what I mean? They're like, why can't I you take it. 36 off yours? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. not, not going to work that way. But I'll take 36 seconds. Do you know what I mean? That would be huge for me. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's so cool. I find, like, I went to, like, the Puma Run Club the other evening. And that's literally just, like, well, actually, you know, you were there. Very mm -hmm. casual 5K round. But I think what struck me is, like, it's just running brings... I think especially as a pro, you can kind of get wrapped up in a bit of a bubble of mm -hmm. like racing and taking it quite seriously. And things like that just in a way bring me back down to earth and remind me of like the pure joy yeah. of running and the community yeah. and, you know, just the benefit of like getting out the door for yeah. a run, mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever pace yeah. Yeah. and what it brings just in itself. Mm -hmm. It almost takes takes the seriousness out of it which is is something that i don't know i just sometimes need that reminder yeah i even think the same for me like i'm not a pro runner but i take everything so seriously that just having that reminder yeah. that it is just for fun i do it because i love it like, yeah, yeah. And again like the enjoying the actual process of it and yeah. just the pureness of it rather just than just being like oh, i have to hit this goal all the yeah. time yeah no exactly and um, something rose mentioned in our last episode was how when she moved to london she found it hard to find a group to join just mm -hmm. like for socially rather than taking it too seriously at first yeah what do you think are the barriers i think now we've got like a lot more groups sort of starting where it is a yeah. bit more fun and social and maybe it's a bit easier now but do you think there still are barriers for people that are trying to get into the sport and just want to have a bit of fun with it i think the the biggest one is people who think they're too slow you know, and that, that that's a lot of like, because we haven't, you know, I think we're like the number one, if you type in like Battersea Park Run Club, like I think on Google, we're like the biggest hit. But the biggest like reservation people have is like, oh, like, you know, I don't want to come and make it too slow or embarrass myself. And we can make any session work for anybody. Do you know what I mean? Like they don't, like when we set, you know, a 17 or 18 minute session and they're like, yeah, but I'm so much slower than the people ahead. Yeah, but you're running just the same amount of time. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how far you run. Yeah. Yeah. And even like, you know, on, we have a, we normally do like a one mile warm up and a one mile warm down, you know, and then we're like, hey, you ladies or, or guys, we, you should take the one kilometer walk home, uh, jog home where we meet for bags and stretches and stuff. And they're like, yeah, but we're running shorter. And it's like, you're running for the same amount of time. 
Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. you know, if, if they can do a mile in nine minutes and you can do a kilometer in nine minutes, then it makes zero difference. And you're actually getting the same amount of benefit and boost out of that. Yeah. So I think that's the biggest one. Um, and having coaches that, are, you know, me and Dan aren't perfect, but having coaches that are able to, to mix in sessions, be flexible, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, organize loops and, and groups that doesn't make athletes feel left out you know, of like, oh, they're always at the back or the group's always waiting for them. Mm. Um, That's such an interesting way of doing it in time instead of distance. Yeah. Just to make it, it, it is so equal. Yeah, exactly. It's a really good way of framing it. And trying to get, you know, and if you do do like, you know, set loops for, you know, we do like Peace Pagoda loops uh, yeah. in Battersea Park. And it's like, um, yeah, well, like one group will set 10 and another group will get seven. And when you build up that experience of like, all right, what kind of pace are they running? You can... And like, oh, they finish within about 30 seconds of each other. And so it's like, yeah, so you've done the same length session. Yeah, Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Just because they've done three reps more, their their rep is, if they're running 700 meters in 40 seconds quicker than you, yeah. again, they probably And also it doesn't really done. matter. Like, it doesn't matter. They, yeah. you get, know, down, get down and enjoy so it. So it's comparison, but actually if you're just yeah. getting out there for a session, you've boosted your fitness, you've exactly. made yourself feel great. and Got out the yeah. door. Do you know what I mean? Got out the door. Yeah. Exactly. So no, I think that's probably, and then the, the safety aspect for, for, for ladies and, and in winter, I think it's huge. Yeah, that's a really big one, yeah. We have a, a really cool group of um, ladies that all come down, and a lot of them say that's why they really enjoy it, being yeah. in that kind of, like, group mentality. Yeah, and, you know, cool. Battersea Park's lovely, and you're very lucky to be able to run in Battersea during the winter, you know, mm -hmm. to be that mm. lit and on, yeah. the, on the whole that safe. But there are lots of places in London that don't have access to that niceness of park. Yeah, and I think just having that worry, like, taken away from you, the all... Yeah in a group setting is yeah. such a big thing. Yeah, you know, you got people looking out for you, you know, you got coaches that are watching yeah. what's going on and have got your bags and your your phones and your wallets safe. Yeah, um, brilliant. So, no, we really we really enjoy it. And the other good thing is they do actually remind you that you're at, you are quite good. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Every yeah, now and some again. Some perspective. Some perspective. You know, I'm sat here to you two like crying because Brian <laughs> Faye's taken 19 seconds out of me. And these guys are like, me, I'd love to be within 20 minutes of you. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah, to totally. say, actually, you are actually, you know, we're not. Yeah. Know, yeah. It's yeah. great. It's a win win. Win exactly. for them, win for you. <laughs> exactly. As yeah. I said, for a sport that is essentially so simple. Yeah. You know, of like one foot in front of the other. Yeah. And Getting and, from A to B as quickly as you can. Yeah. The person who wins Easy. is the person that gets to A to B. And it's like yeah. essentially just run more. Yeah. And the better yeah. you'll become. <laughs> how difficult we kind of vaguely make it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's astonishing. So much overthinking sometimes. Isn't yeah, it? exactly. So I think that brings us nicely onto a couple of quick fire questions. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. The big ones. Big ones. <laughs> Nervous now. Huh? All right, I'll, I'll go first. So um, if you were to be world class in another sport other than running, what would it be? Uh, We've think, answered these before. I think tennis then. would be fun. <laughs> Yeah. That was Steph's answer. Yeah, I think tennis would be yeah. fun. I was like, it's a good one. Between tennis or golf, like football, obviously for the money. Yeah. Mm. But tennis, I think golf would be. Now tennis or golf would be yeah. cool. Yeah, and I thought yeah. you were going to say football because I know you yeah. used to play a yeah. lot of football. Yeah, but... I just don't enjoy. I didn't. Yeah, no, I don't think I'd enjoy it at like no. an elite okay. level. Whereas I think tennis. Interesting. I, yeah, tennis or golf. Yeah. Do you do you, do you play tennis at all or very enjoy? badly? Very yeah. badly. I played as a kid. Played as a kid to an okay level. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then got taught golf by my mates because they would all go and play and I got left out. Yeah. So it's like, oh, I, need, I need to be able to like learn how to get around, but but no. I know. Yeah, it was. You've got yeah. the height for it though. I don't. Yeah. So <laughs> that's the issue. It's a minor hitch, a minor barrier to entry here. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you would be world class. Yeah, otherwise, otherwise yeah. that's my only issue. All other boxes are ticked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, second very important question. Yeah. Favorite brunch, and you know, being a Londoner, we assume you love brunch because all Londoners do. Yeah. So, what would it be? Full English. Is that nice. breakfast? Hey, yeah, that's brunch. brunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think full English sourdough. Yeah. Nice, solid. Yeah. You yeah, had to have all the in. sourdough in yeah, there. Yeah. That there was no hesitation there. No, it's normally the I, I'm I I like to when I buy food I like to be full so like okay. I like I like the bigger things so on the, bigger things on the menu. Key. Quantity yeah. is key. Yeah. So nice. I don't like things that are too small. Nice. Okay, so to end things, yeah. um, we're very big advocates for celebrating our wins, successes, um, however big or small, whether yeah. it be running, non-running. 
Um, we're going to call this our high five me moment. <laughs> yeah. uh, so what would you say is your high five me moment? Doesn't it have to be like your fastest time, but like that moment where you're like, I yeah. nailed it. I'm giving myself the biggest high five. I think when I, uh, well, I think when I signed with Puma, mm. that was, that was yeah. cool because it was a lot of, I've done this sport for years because I love it. I got quite good at it. You know, yeah. I enjoy the structure I've made all of my friends from it. You know, I've, it's my education. It helped, you know, going and getting my master's from the US. Um, it decided where I went for my first university in the UK. Yeah. And then it almost transitioned to like, okay, cool. You've got to a point where you're good enough to do this as your job. Yeah. So I, I think that Such was a like recognition. That, yeah, mm. that was quite cool that you, you like weirdly like sign. And it was yeah. like, you sign on the sheet and then it's like. I made it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And so I think that was, that was quite cool. Because I, yeah, I told my dad after coming back from the NCA. I was like, I've got three years, and if I um, aren't making money in three years, I'll buy a suit and I'll God. commute up to London. Which and, is and, not long. And, to... get, and get a proper job. Yeah. And then I managed to do yeah. this in like the third year. So it was like, oh, oh, oh. Okay. I was like, Whew. yeah, it got, got, got close. <laughs> it awesome. yeah. got close. I was like, all right, I've avoided real job for a bit longer. Well done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, that that's a good one. That deserves yeah. a high five. <laughs> yeah, so and that would be it. Awesome. Well, it's been great chatting to you and yeah, thank you so much for coming on the pod. It's been great to hear your thoughts on process versus outcome and just, yeah, a bit more about your journey. <laughs> You're very welcome. It was a lot of fun. Thank you for having me on here. So appreciate it. Thanks for joining us for Five Miles Easy. On next week's episode, we're going to be joined by ultra legend Carla Molinaro. And we had a bit of a twist because we recorded live from Love Trials Festival. See you next week. <laughs>